Hello and welcome to Sustainable Production Techniques 2. Today we're going to be talking about subtraction cutting. Let's get into it. So what is subtraction cutting? Well, subtraction cutting is a hollow construction method used to create a void for the body to inhabit. Now, that's fairly complex to imagine, but really if you think about it, traditional pattern cutting creates um, uh, a layer to go over the body. What we're doing with this cutting technique is creating a space for the body to go through. So subtraction cutting looks at joining the fabric in such a way that it creates a tube for the body to go through. Lots of different tubes, exciting tubes, but tubes nonetheless. The drape, drape of the fabric creates more volume than with traditional construction techniques. Now this isn't strictly true, it depends on how you cut it, but for the purposes of this conversation it is true. Okay, we can see here um, the tube the that is being created. You can see the, the pole of the stand, um, and you can see the fabric creating that tube. Look on this side, you can see the extra volume created by all of this fabric around the waist. So, who started subtraction cutting? Well, it was started by Julian Roberts, who's a British designer and filmmaker who's presented collections at London Fashion Week, um, as well as um, teaching subtraction cutting around the world for about the last 20 years. And he developed this technique in 1998. Now I'd a million percent recommend following him on Instagram at Subtraction Cutting and looking at his website. Uh, on his website you'll find a range of resources including a free PDF book which um, was used heavily as a source of material and information for this presentation. Um, please download it, please share it, please use it, please do it. Okay, we can see a range of different subtraction cutting processes here. Um, you can see a short version here that's asymmetric, and this particular technique uses a black side of the tube and a white side of the tube, so two layers stitched together. And now we have sleeves over here. And we can see really highly contrast fabric, really patterned fabric, create really interesting silhouettes. Um, again, using the double side shows you how much that fabric moves around the body to create that void. Um, and it's an exciting drape on the end here. So why would someone undertake this process? Well, it allows for chance to be injected into the design process and it gives you unpredictable results. In contemporary fashion, you know, we're used to really cookie cutter uh, results and approaches. This allows us to not um, drive the process, not drive the outcome, it allows us to, to allow innovation to happen. And it can be used to push the aesthetic boundaries and mix the design and construction process. Increasingly, we're seeing um, in contemporary fashion that there is no boundary. People don't draw a design, then make it. The worlds merge. And people like Julian Roberts have innovated in this space, um, exploring the role of construction and pattern cutting, especially in the design process. Now, the exploration of negative space as in creating a hole as opposed to covering the body, creating a tube as opposed to covering the body, gives the designer a new approach to paddy cutting and really makes us think about the body. And in this way, the garments require the body to create their shape. But lastly, the most important thing is it's actually really, really fun. So how do you do it? Now, all of the diagrams you're going to see now are from Julian's um, free book, and by all means, please, please, please download it and grab it. Now, we can see here um, that this is a tube. You know, either we have a flat piece of fabric that is stitched into a tube, or we have existing garment shapes, like a sleeve and a dress and a skirt here, that already have tubes. This is the most basic foundation of subtraction cutting. And if we look at this, we're stitching two holes together. Now we're stitching them with the fullness on the um, on the inside, uh, and this is what we kind of grip this this kind of um, you know uh, dual cone shape here. And then we stitch it the other way with the fullness on the outside, um, with the volume on the openings. We get this shape here. Now combining these two techniques is re uh, with the tube is really the foundation of what we're looking at, and we can see that here. You know, that's uh, that's part of the tube, and uh, here again, and you can see the different contrast in fabrics allows us to see um, how those layers work, and we'll get into that in a second. Oh yeah, now this little section at the bottom here, you can see that that, that is an extension of this draped area, um, and you can see the fabric twisting around itself, like that. Okay, now this is what's called the tunnel technique, so it's stitching a tube, plus a bunch of holes together to create tunnels, all different kinds of tunnels. Now, by all means, read this and get all the information that you need. 
Um, but I would still recommend getting the book instead because it has more techniques than this. Okay, and we can see here, oh, excuse me, we can see here that by creating, we have our tube here, and we're creating the two holes and stitching them together, what we end up with is this fabric here and this shape here, creating some really interesting um, drape. Now, if we extend it to a longer piece of fabric, we can see by creating many holes, we create a lot of fullness. There's our tube and our holes together. Okay, and the pattern for something like that would look like this. You can see all of our holes here and our body to move um, through that. Now if we start to twist this around and start to think about how we play with the placement of those holes, suddenly we're getting really exciting silhouettes. And you can see that on the placement of this sleeve and this leg, that actually the moment we're not really thinking about the body so much, but we're exploring um, this, this tubular approach, this tunnel approach. Okay, now this is the thing to think about. Now the next step really involves looking at the side seam and uh, the bodice. So what Julian's done here is kind of drawn two examples. This first one that I've got the arrow pointing at really shows a more of a traditional approach to um, side seams. And if you are new to pattern cutting, you can see these are the shoulder seams here and the neckline. Um, these are the armholes and side seam A, side seam B, side seam A, side seam B. And what he's saying is that actually it doesn't matter um, what shape these things are as long as A matches with A uh, and B matches with B. So that means you're free to play. Okay, so we can see here he's created a tube and laid down the front and back of a bodice on the tube um, and then drawn um, from the bottom of the front to the bottom of the back and the bottom of the front to the bottom of the back but only on one layer. So he's only cut out the top layer of the tube. So you can see your body would go through here um, and the top of your body would come out here at this hole. Now he's suggesting stitching the side seams together. Now if we combine this with all of the holes, so you can see there's our hem there um, and our one layer hole at the top here. And this might give you a bit of a clearer um, visual of it. They have top pieces here, there we go. And you can see this is the opening of the fabric. You can see they're um, asymmetric, so they don't have to match up. The left and the right don't have to match up as long as the um, front and the back match up together. And here are some uh, exploratory images from Julian's book showing uh, different approaches to the pattern cutting technique and different inspirational um, imagery for the pattern cutting technique. And again here, and you can see using the black and white shows us really how we can move around the body. This is us exploring positive and negative space. And you're not limited, you know, we've got legs, we've got arms, we've got bodies, we've got everything here. You can see this is our pattern for the um, hole as well as our pattern for the bodice. So this is your traditional approach and you can see we've got our bodice pattern here only through one layer and all the excess from that layer is sitting here and all the excess from another layer is sitting down here. It can be used on tops as well. This particular one actually is a, is a half scale, I think. Um, so it gives you an idea that you can do it in all different um, scales. What uh, we recommend at USW is trialing this in a half scale using a pillowcase. Um, that gives you a nice small little tube and you can play with that. And then you could even go full scale by using uh, a duvet cover. Um, charity shops have them. Everyone's got old ones at home. It's a great way to kind of play with that material. What are the variants for this technique? Honestly, your only limit is your imagination. Um, the void creator to can be present for the for the body, arms, legs, anything. Now, Julian's got some amazing resources and a range of approaches you can try in his book, and it's available for free from his website, so please go to it. It's much more uh, in-depth than what I've shown you today, but this is an introduction anyway. Um, now, our question that we're going to ask for every technique, is it sustainable? Well, yes, it is sustainable because it creates, um, you know, it creates one-off garments that have a stronger connection to the wearer. You know, each one is individual, each one is unique, and the involvement of the wearer in the process, in the kind of formation of, of the garment itself, allows them to have a stronger connection to it. 
So in that sense, it is sustainable. I mean, it also explores different approaches to pattern cutting and potentially allows us to explore um, approaches to using waste material. You know, effectively what we're looking at here is a tube and explored in different ways. And that might be a way for us to explore fabric um, that otherwise would go to waste. Oh, also no. It's also, it's not sustainable in the same way that nothing produced brand new is sustainable and, that, and that's a, it's a very controversial statement, but really what I'm saying there is that garments need to have a meaning, garments need to have a function, garment, garments need to have um, a purpose beyond the aesthetic. So um, no garments, no brand new garment being made today is sustainable, or at least is inherently sustainable, unless it has a function, a meaning, and a purpose. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please follow us on Instagram and enjoy.